currently working on the uh, two most southern areas where uh, tunnels will be required. These two sections account for nearly 70% of all the tunnels that will be needed on high-speed rail, which is almost 35 miles of tunneling. So starting in the first reach, Bakersfield to Palmdale, this reach commences at the Bakersfield uh, uh, station and travels in the southeasterly direction to the Tatchby Mountains. The overall uh, length of this reach is approximately 80 miles. Currently there's four uh, alignment alternatives being considered. Each of these alignment alternatives have nine tunnels. The tunnels are shown in the purple. Total length of these tunnels don't differ much from alignment to alignment, roughly nine to 10 miles, which accounts for a little over 10% of the entire alignment. They range in length from 0.3 miles for the shorter tunnels in the northern part of the alignment to two and a half miles for some of the tunnels located towards the south. Maximum ground cover that will be excavated will just over 700 feet. During the exploration, none of the drill holes were located in the high cover area, so we don't have a good indication where the groundwater table is, but we're expecting quite high pressures. The rock types, uh, they range from weak, very weak uh, sedimentary uh, deposits to fairly uh, high strength, massive uh, granitic rocks. The uh, sedimentary deposits consist of thing conglomerates. Basically, uh, these deposits will be uh, encountered in the uh, northern parts of the, uh, this reach, in tunnels 1, 2, and 3. The uh, conglomerates basically consist of uh, fine grain, coarse grain materials, and also there's boulder sizes as well. The uh, structure itself, when it's dominated by this coarser material, it tends to be uncemented and unstable. And because of this, and the relatively uh, short lengths of the tunnel and the boulders, sequential excavation methods are most uh, best suited. The uh, quartz diorite and the uh, quartz monzonite, they were observed in surface outcrops in the remainder of the tunnels. And uh, they could uh, range from very, very massive rock conditions with pressure strengths in excess of 7,500 PSI to very uh, weak, highly fractured rock when uh, located in close proximity to the fault zones. Uh, the other thing about these rock types has a high uh, abundance of abrasive material, so they'll be uh, found in more than half of the tunnels. And also some uh, karst features uh, associated with these limestone deposits. So fortunately, we don't have any major faults that cross to the tunnel alignments themselves. However, the uh, White Wolf Fault and the Garlic Fault are in close proximity to some of the uh, portal locations. These uh, faults are they're capable of producing significant displacements. So the White Wolf Fault last ruptured back in the 50s and caused the railroad tracks, existing railroad tracks up in the Tatchby amounts to shift uh, significantly. We can't prevent these displacements from occurring. So once these displacements do occur, we're going to have a curve introduced in an alignment, and if these trains are going 200 miles an hour, we will have to have minimum radiuses uh, at least of 18,000 feet, and will require over a mile of track for to uh, correct the alignment. So even though these faults are not in the tunnels themselves, uh, they will impact the size of the tunnels to accommodate, accommodate this uh, shift. The challenges associated with this reach, there's a lot of logistic issues. Bakersfield is well known for, uh, it's an oil producing community, so um, there's potential of excavating uh, uh, these tunnel and gas conditions. And also some of the portals will be located in highly weathered rock, which will require deep cuts and will be some challenge associated with slope stability. There's no roads going to these sites, so they'll have to be constructed as well. In terms of power, there's no existing power nearby as well. So some of the shorter tunnels could use generators, but for TBM tunnels, they'll need to uh, bring uh, power in. So moving down south to the next reach, Palmdale Burbank, there's three alignments that are being currently evaluated, and they range in length from anywhere from 39 to 45 miles in length. All three of them commence at the Palmdale uh, station as they enter the central region 
of the uh, of the segment they'll either uh, be excavated through the San Gabriel Mountains or they'll be uh, excavated through some hilly terrain which is located adjacent hill to the SR-14 alignment and as the, all three alignments emerge from the uh, mountain range, they'll enter the San Fernando Valley. Uh, the SR-14 is the most westerly alignment and it consists of six tunnels with the maximum length tunnel of uh, 12 and a half miles. The E1 and E2 uh, alignments have six and four tunnels each with the longest tunnel being 21 miles in length and that'll be located in the E1 alignment. Unlike the previous reach, this uh, segment, the mountain tunnels, actually account for 67% or two-thirds of all the, the entire alignment. So a significant amount of tunnels in this area. Last summer, they, they did perform the geotechnical investigation, drilled uh, six borings ranging in depth uh, 500 to 2,700 feet. This resulted in almost 9,000 feet of core that had to be logged. The, the longest uh, hole, the 2,700 foot deep core, took almost four months to complete. Once the drilling was completed, uh, downhole ge geophysical surveys were performed, as well as uh, high resolution acoustical televiewer surveys were done. Hydraulic conductivity measurements were also done to give a better understanding of the uh, groundwater movement within the rock mass. Some of the results from the hydra uh, hydraulic conductivity test, this just uh, summarizes uh, hydraulic conductivities uh, values that we would get. So the values range through several orders of magnitude. Overall, we're looking at very low to low, but uh, for the SR14 alignment, we're expecting the highest values. Temperature measurements were also uh, recorded. And basically, you could see that the ge geothermal gradient, uh, basically, there's a changes from location to location. But at each specific location, it doesn't differ much with depth. We also performed uh, carbon-14 dating. We wanted to know if the groundwater depth was connected with the shallower groundwater. It was confirmed that uh, depth, the water is at least 4,500 years old and it hasn't mixed with or been recharged, replenished with the younger shallower water. And this was also confirmed with chemical testing too. They had two different separate chemical signatures. We have long tunnel drives up to 20 miles in length. Uh, this is going to be crucial to pick the uh, uh, correct tunnel boring machines to uh, excavate these tunnels. Highly variable ground conditions that range from alluvium to very massive granitic rocks even within one tunnel. High groundwater pressures, uh, we're expecting at least 50 bars, uh, bars of water pressure in fault zones with the higher cover areas. Uh, tunneling environmentally sensitive areas with underneath the Angeles National Forest will be a challenge. And like all tunnels in Southern California, gassy ground in the sedimentary deposits. And we have like 17 fall crossings that, uh, for, some, uh, for some alignments that will be uh, evaluated. And that is it.